Throughout the space shuttle program, a familiar launch day sight was the shiny silver vehicle known as the Astrovan. Before each launch, astronauts smiled and waved as they left the crew quarters and boarded the van that would carry them to meet their fully fueled ride to space. The vehicle would wind its way across NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida as it carried the crew to the launch pad. It was an exciting ride for the crew members, but especially for the rookies ready for their first trip to space. The first time, it's just everything about it. It's just, you know, the anticipation, excitement. You know, you're a little bit nervous, uh, but it's, uh, I mean, it's just neat to, to know that, you know, you're one in the series of a very long line of astronauts that rode in this vehicle going to the pad, you know, for flight to space, so it's pretty cool. Early shuttle crews had fewer astronauts, so they rode to the launch pad in an Apollo-era transport van. But since 1984, each shuttle crew traveled those nine miles aboard the current vehicle. The modified Airstream motorhome only racked up about 27,000 miles in its 27 years of service. That's because it's used solely to transport the astronauts for each mission. But I always associate the, this vehicle with flying, because you only get in here twice. You get in here for TCDT, which of course is the launch rehearsal, and then launch day. The only other time the Astrovan was used was to take the astronaut back to crew quarters after landing. The vehicle's appeal is rooted in its tradition rather than its decor. It's not really extravagant, kind of like bench seating, and uh, it's pretty crowded on launch day, especially with a crew of seven. You know, I think everyone's trying to cut the tension with a joke or two from time to time. The interior's narrow center aisle is paralleled by long benches. Lift-out sections accommodate the ventilator units used to circulate cool air through the astronauts' bulky orange launch and entry suits. This is the only place they have, they have liquid air, and liquid air is really really good. Uh, you know, we have this, uh, this cooling uh, garment that circulates water cooling, and in the hot Florida sun, it's nice to have it. So they plug that liquid air into you, and it, it just blows this cool air throughout your suit, which is really nice because it actually dries your suit. And the only place we get to have it is in here, and I don't know why. It was like a special treat on launch day. Now, while each crew no doubt had their own unique take on their ride to the launch pad, Shuttle Atlantis STS-135 mission crew took in the significance of the final ride for the space shuttle program. It was really special this time because there were so many people here. And I think uh, even though it's kind of an anxious time as you head out to the launch pad because you know this might actually be the day, on this particular day, you know, the last flight, I think we were all really amazed at how many people showed up. I mean, even on the road, you hang the right turn to go to the pad, and there were the road was lined with people waving American flags. It made me feel good, you know, to know that that the shuttle program meant this much to so many people, and not just national, but international. I mean, a lot of people turned out to watch the you know the grand finale, if you would. While the vehicle won't be taking any more shuttle crews to the launch pad. NASA plans to keep it ready to ferry future astronaut crews to the pad. I would like to keep this tradition. You know, I don't know if any of us will get to fly on the next vehicle, whatever that vehicle may be, a U.S. vehicle, but uh, it would be kind of neat to have some of it be the same. You know, and actually traditions are important in a business like this. It keeps everybody connected. Everybody ready? Let it happen, Captain. Hold on, everybody. So after riding the Astrovan to the launch pad a number of times, what would it be like if a space shuttle commander got the keys to take it for a spin? STS-135 Commander Chris Ferguson found out. Here, zero to 35 in a minute and a half. That was the most white-knuckled event I've had. I pronounce this vehicle fit for another space program. 